All right, now this part, this problem has two parts. Why is that? There's a tension over here of 200. There's some intermediate tension that's unknown. And then a third tension due to our force over here that we're trying to find. So there's actually uh, 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 two parts to this, but they're both done in the very same way. Just remember that for whatever you might call these, maybe call that one T2 and T3, that the order of those matters when we use that equation. Because remember, this equation was done with T2 being greater than T1. So you can set up two equations. Between the two of them, you can eliminate the unknown T, T2 in this case. We know what T3 is and we're looking for T1. We don't need T2, but you can find it or you can eliminate it directly. So you have your choice of, of having two separate equations with T2, and that's the outcome of one of the equations, and then the in go to the other one, or you can set up the two equations, combine them and eliminate T2, just get one equation that relates T1 to T2.
Good thing shootouts are done with guns, not calculators. You guys. <laughs> Stool under his feet. So 
We said, fine, I'll just recalculate this and we'll uh, raise them up in the air a little higher. Of course, then they went and got a chair. We raised them higher yet? Then they went and got his horse. Shot his horse. We would <laughs> never do that. Never. <laughs> just shoot Bart. All right, so slightly different problem. How much must T1 be to just start to raise him up? Remember our general equation. for these problems is that. So how much do we have to pull on to just start to raise him up? You show me that and your weekend starts early. You got it already? Or are you thinking? You know, a little big uh, chunk of chewing tobacco. Sometimes makes your brain juices flow a little bit better. You got it? No. That's not right. This is fundamentally the same problem, but non-fundamentally different. So it's not the same answer as what we just did. That was the minimum force just to hold him from falling down. What's the minimum force now we need to exert to start moving him up? Just the minimum force to get him going. Once you've done that, if it starts sliding, then remember the friction drops usually a little bit. Once things are actually sliding, we're right at the point of making the rope slide. chance of starting your weekend a whole nine minutes sooner. Now it's down to six. Well, it like five seconds. Oh really? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> oh yeah. I hate this. this. I never have gotten the, the time. I even, have it, I even have it written. I don't know if you ever see. I have to come here and check. I'm looking to see when the class ends. I just didn't check this time. All right, well, you've got 45 seconds, but you just wasted a bunch of it. How is this problem different? This problem is different in that the order of the forces is the other way. Because now this needs to be the bigger force. This is still an intermediate, and this is now the smallest force because you're trying to move him the other way, whereas in the first problem, the system was trying to go its own way. So, I guess I can give that to you and then you can get out of class early. Oh, shoot. There it goes. There's the bell. Second over the weekend, it's 513 pounds. It's just the same equations, you just have to switch, uh, switch the order in which things appear.